Hey, welcome back. Richard Smith, Apple Stock Praise School of Music. Oh my goodness, so excited about this lesson today. AP 102, Lesson 1, and in this lesson we're going to be going over a review. So, you learned the dominant sevenths, minor sevenths, major sevenths, suspended twos, minor twos in the previous courses, and where you can actually substitute them and use them. Then, we're going to do a quick review and just make sure that you've got that down. And we're also going to kind of jump into some nines a little bit. So that's going to be a lot of fun, but we've got a really, really easy way, using what you already know, to help you to play and use the nines and tell you how to use them and where to use them. Okay, so quick review. Dominant seventh chords. Okay, so basically the way you make a dominant seventh chord, the formal way, we have two different ways we can make each type of seventh chord. First way is the formal way. So we're going to start off with the C major chord, C, E, G. Okay, we're going to add the seventh note of the C scale, which is B. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to um, add that to the top of the chord. Okay, so we're adding it up here, and then we're going to flat that note, that B note, flat that seven. That's going to give us a C, E, G, B flat chord, which is a C7 chord. Okay, that's the formal way. To be honest with you, we don't normally play them like that, as we've gone over before. But now we're going to go over the shortcut way, and basically what we do, is we just take a major chord, so C for example, and we add the seventh note on the bottom, and then we flat that seventh note. Okay? So a C7, the shortcut way, with the seven on the bottom would be B flat, E, G. And we just kind of kick out the C. You can leave it in there if you want to, but we're playing it in our left hand, and it's just easier. So let's do a few more, okay? So let's do like an F. F um, let's make an F7 the formal way. F, A, C. Add the seventh note of the F major scale which is always just um, a half step down or one note down from your whatever chord you're trying to make, your root note. All right, so F, A, C. They're going to add E on top. We're going to flat the E. We're going to come up with E flat. And that is the formal way to make it. The shortcut way would be like this. F, A, C. Add the seventh on the bottom, which is E. And then flat that seventh, which is going to give us in the left hand F. In the right hand, E flat, A, and C. Okay, F7 chord. All right. That's dominant sevenths, and you remember how we use these? These are used as a substitute in um, usually going from like one to four. So for the key of C, going from the one chord to F. Okay, it's kind of like a transition chord, right? Or going from the five to the one. So for the key of C, once again, going to the G, which is our five. We're gonna add the seventh now, okay, which is F. So we have F, B, D for a G7. That's going to transition us back to the one. And you really can use this pretty much any fourth movement. You can use this um, going with the minor chords, all kind of stuff, you know, as you have probably seen demonstrated already in some of the previous courses and lessons, okay? So we're not going to spend too much time on that. Let's jump into the minor sevenths because it's just a review. We've already gone over this in our previous courses. So minor sevenths, let's take like an A minor chord, A, C, E. We're going to uh, make do it the formal way. So we're going to add a uh, minor or a seven on top top of the chord. Okay, a half step down from our root of A is G sharp, and then we're going to flat that note, flat the seven. So it's going to give us A, C, E, G. That's an A minor seven, the formal way. Okay, we're going to do a D minor, play a D minor chord, D, F, A, add the seventh on top, just C sharp, flat that seventh, and you're left with D, F, A, C. Okay, that's a D minor seven. That's the formal way you're adding it on top. We don't normally play these like this, but sometimes we do. Um, so, the way we normally play it, though, is the shortcut way. So, A minor, and basically we're going to move our thumb down one, we're adding the seventh on the bottom, and then we're adding the seventh, uh, we're flatting the seventh. So, A minor seven would be G, C, E, with an A in the bass. Or you can add the A in there if you want to, keep it in there, you can kick it out, either way is fine. Okay, D minor, D, F, A, add the seventh on the bottom, flat the seventh. C, F, A, okay, the D and the bass. Basically just moving our thumb down two notes, or a whole step, or two half steps. All right, and the way we make, uh, the way we use minor seventh chords, as you probably already know, is we use them as substitutes on regular minor chords. So instead of just playing a plain, boring, regular minor chord, we're gonna kind of upgrade it, make it sound better. So A minor is gonna become A minor seven, D minor would become D minor seven, and this works on pretty much any minor chord, 99% of the time. Sweet. Let's jump into the third type of seventh, which is the major seventh, okay? And we've kind of already played this, actually, but let's do it the formal way. So C, E, G. We're going to add 
have the seventh on the top, the seventh note of the C major scale, which is B. And there's a C major seven the formal way. C, E, G, B. Okay? Now if we're gonna do an F, F A C, add the seventh note of the F major scale on the top. Remember it's always a half step or one note down from your root note. F A C E. G would be G B D F sharp. Okay? Or G flat. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it the shortcut way. We're gonna add it on the bottom. So we're gonna take C E G, C major chord. We're gonna turn this into a awesome C major seventh chord. So we're gonna drop our thumb down to B. B E G, alright? Big. Alright, and then F major chord, change it to F major seven. We're just gonna drop that, add that seventh on the bottom. B A C. G major. Seventh, gotta be careful on this one. I'm gonna drop it down to F sharp or G flat there. So you're left with uh, F sharp, B, D, and G in your bass. Okay, once again, you could leave the root note in there. Get that nice uh, dissonance, as they call it, the fancy word. This means two notes next to each other. Clashing sound. Or you can just leave it out like I like to do most of the time. All right, sweet. And the way we use major seventh chords is we can typically substitute them in slow songs on our one chord and four chord. So we're playing a song like, you know, Surround Me, O Lord, um, Break Every Chain. I mean, really, you name it, you can use a major seventh, um, generally as long as it is a slow worship full type song and it's on your one chord or your four chord. All right, sweet. Uh, the next one we're gonna review is this suspended two chord. Okay, so basically, um, you've already learned this one as well in the previous courses, but um, you're gonna take a major chord, C, E, G, and we're gonna kick out the third which is E, you got the E note, third note of the chord, third note of the scale, we're gonna add the second, okay, C, D, G, and if you want to, you can leave the third in there, it sounds almost the same, a little bit of a different sound there, okay, F major chord would be F, A, C, kick out the third, add the two, Look, you got F, G, C, leave the third in there if you want to also, most of the time. And uh, we'll go over the rule for it in a minute. G major chord, G, B, D, add, uh, kick out the third, add the second, you got G, A, D, okay? And basically, this one's really easy. Um, just like the minor seventh, you can always use that to replace a regular minor chord. You can always use the major chord, uh, you can always use the suspended two, I mean, to replace the major chord. So if you've got just a plain, boring major chord, change it into a suspended two, or just add that two note, it's gonna give it a much better, much cooler sound. All right, um, and then the last one here is the minor two chord. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a minor chord, like A minor, and we're actually going to just add the second note of the scale. We're not gonna kick out this note here, we're just gonna add the second note. Real pretty sound, so you have A, B, E, I'm sorry, A, B, C, E. Okay, D minor would be D, F, A, and then you're just gonna add the note right next to the, your, um, your middle note. Getting a message here. Let me fix this real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, sweet. All right, cool. And so that's pretty much it for that. The way the minor two chords work is you can pretty much substitute them anytime there's a minor chord. And you're going to see this like really come into action here in a second. Like it's super cool. Um, so yeah, let's jump into that. So introduction to ninth chords. And hopefully you're following along with the lesson um, printout or the PDF study guide that goes along with this lesson. Um, and basically, oh my goodness, this is so cool. You know, the next course, AP 103, Advanced Piano Chords, that's gonna give you like a really, really complete explanation and detailed instruction on the ninth chords. But this is gonna kind of be just a quick lesson on ninths to really get you going. You're gonna see how easy these are. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. All right, so if you look at um, a typical um, song, let's just say like the exercise song one that goes with this lesson which is basically like two C's, followed by an F, followed by a C, followed by an A minor, a D minor, a G. Okay, you hit that on the C, put the key of C of course here. You're like, what chords can I substitute? And you, we've probably done this exercise before, but just a little bit of review. So on the first C major, or first C chord, C major chord, we could either turn that into a C major seven or a C two chord, right? second C chord we could turn into a C2 or a C7 chord because it's about to go to F. The 
F chord, we could change it to an F2 or an F major 7 because it's your 4 chord in the key of C. Remember, major 7s, so you can substitute those on the 1 or the 4 in slow songs. Um, so F is our 4 chord in the key of C. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can substitute that. Um, and then back to the C chord. And we can change that into a C2 or whatever we wanted to do, really, whatever sounded good. The A minor, we can do either an A minor 7 or we can do an A minor 2, right? The D minor, we can do an A, a D minor 7 or a D minor 2. And then the G, that's about to move to the C. We can either do a G2 or we can do a G7. Okay? So, here's what's really cool. And if you can visualize this, it's, it's even more awesome if you're looking at the printout. But, okay, so on the first chord, for example, the C. If we could do a C major 7 or we could do a C2, why don't we just put those two chords together, right? And just add them together. So what happens when you add a two plus seven? What do you get? This is a little trick. This is not really the theoretical way it's supposed to work, but this is maybe not the best example, but I like it because it's easy, easy to remember. So um, two plus seven is nine, right? Okay, so let's take a C major chord. Let's turn it into a C major seven, and then let's add the two. And now we've got B, D, E, G. Okay? See what I did there? Okay, or you can go to F, make it an F major 7, E, A, C, and then add the 2 of F. Okay? And you're not playing the root note, you're not playing an F in your right hand, it's only in your left hand, just the bass note. Alright, is that crazy or what? So, if you can do one or the other in the substitution, why not do both? Okay, so on the A minor, you have an A, C, E, let's, um, Change it to an A minor 7, and then let's add the 2. And there's an A minor 9. Okay? Alright, let's do a D minor. Add a 7. Really, the flat is 7th, if you know what I mean. So you're turning it to a minor 7, basically. And then you're adding the 2. So now you have D minor 9, which is C, E, F, A. Alright, let's look at back at the C major C major 9. Okay? B, D, E, G. I don't know if I was real clear on that's what that is. B, D, E, G. The F major 9 is just the F major 7 plus the F2. 7 plus 2 equals 9. Let's do the dominant 7. So let's do like a G7. Okay, so we're going to do GBD, add the 7, FBD, and then add the 2. We've got a G9, F, A, B, D. Pretty cool, right? Let's do one more here. So C major 7, C, E, G, uh, add the 7, make it a C7, dominant 7, and then add the 2. You've got a C9 or C dominant. Like I said, we're going to go do these a lot more in depth in the next course where we, you know, really dive deep into them, but this is pretty much how it works. So now you've got, in this exercise song, instead of just having a C2 on the, you know, on the first C, instead of just having a C2 or a C major 7 you can do, now you could also do a C major 9, which really sounds full if you listen to it. Okay, so you have three options now, C2 or C major 7 or C major 9. Uh, same thing on the F, you can do F, F2. F major 7 or F major 9. In fact, in my head, I tend to think of a 7 and 9 almost as the same chord. Okay, they're like they're like brother and sister. All right, A minor. Um, you could change A minor into A minor 7 and then add the 2, make it A minor 9. So now you have three options. You can do A minor, A minor 2, A minor 7, or A minor 9. Any of them would sound great. Same thing on the D minor. D minor, D minor 7, D minor 2, or D minor 9. All right. Hopefully this is making sense for you. Oh my goodness, this is like, it's the easiest, easiest way to play nines ever. Everybody gets, you know, a lot of people get so scared. They're like, oh, nines, those are so hard. Like, I'm gonna have to like play for five years before I can ever learn how to use those. Like, if you know how to use sevenths, I mean, a <laughs> nine's like the same thing. You're just adding the two in there. Seven plus two equals nine. And like I said, we'll dive deeper into it, but this will really help you just like when you're running it, you know, playing maybe songs where maybe the chord sheet says nine or maybe somebody references a nine you don't have to be scared of them if you know the sevens the nines are going to be a, a, a piece of cake so and you substitute them just like you do the seven so anywhere you can put a major seven you can put a major nine anywhere you put a minor seven you can put a minor nine anywhere you put a dominant seven you can put a dominant nine it's just it's super easy it's like really it's more like big brother little brother because the nine just sounds so much fuller seven so it's almost just like you're just making it sound that much nicer that much uh, more full 
So anyways, this is huge. Oh my goodness. So super excited for you to be able to use nines. And now let's just go back real quick and play the exercise song um, with this with the nines now instead of with the sevens, okay? So we're gonna start it off. We're gonna do C major nine. We're gonna change that to a C nine. Okay. That right there sounds like a song by itself. Alright. <laughs> F major nine. C2 on the fourth one, or we can go back to the C major 9. Either one of these sound cool. Okay, let's go to the A minor 9. D minor 9. And then G2. And we're going to change this to G9. Because we're just about to go back to the C, right? You hear how that transitions? Super nice, super clean. Back to the, uh, back to the C chord, back to the 1. Alright, so this works like pretty much all the time. I mean, this is really cool. So um, to finish this lesson up, just basically remember, anytime you're on a one or four chord in a worshipful slower type song, um, you can change um, that plain boring major chord into a major seventh or a suspended two chord or, now you know, a major nine. Anytime you're playing maybe a faster song and uh, or if you're going from one to four or five to one, instead of just doing a dominant seventh, now you can do a dominant nine. Playing a slower song that's got a minor chord instead of just doing a minor seven now, now you can do a minor nine. The substitution rule works almost 100 percent of the time. All right, well, hey, this is huge. Super pumped for you to be able to start using these cool chords. And you know what? There's so much more to learn. We're gonna have so much fun in this in this course. There's just a lot of other cool stuff we're gonna be going over. And we'll see you back here for your next lesson. God bless you.